What's up, everybody? This is Mason. We're back with another episode. Um, today, we're fortunate to have the founder of MusicQuest, Jacob Zax. He's going to join us. Um, MusicQuest is a creative new way to learn music that helps ensure all kids can access the benefits of musical learning and expression. So let's bring on Jacob and learn more about what he's doing. Hey, man. How you doing, man? Thanks for coming on. I'm well. I'm very excited for the opportunity. Thank you. Good. And we'll just address this right away. Big Denver fan, Nuggets fan. Um, yeah. Going to make this interview even better. Yeah. Intersection of two huge passions of mine. So very, very uh, <laughs> grateful to have the opportunity. Great. So uh, tell us about MusicQuest and, and give us your origin story and how, how you started this. Thanks. MusicQuest is a digital music education platform uh, that mostly is focused on kids and has the goal the big ambitious goal to give every kid in the world a chance to make music. And even sort of 10 years ago, that would have been completely unrealistic. And now there are smartphones in nearly every home in the world that are increasingly so, and kids are not far from being able to use those devices to be able to create and learn about music. So we saw, we built, I built an app with college friends actually that allowed um, for easy music creation and kids loved, and we hadn't anticipated that they would, but that sort of showed me, wow, kids love to create, they love music. What is the software that will allow them to learn about and create music on smartphones, tablets, and digital devices? And that's what we've been working on Music Quest since. Very cool. So like for me, I've only ever had GarageBand and that's almost too complicated for me, but if I wanted a more simplified version, I could jump on Music Quest and make music. Perfect. That's exactly right. And GarageBand is complex, um, even for, you know, it's, it's good for audio software, but it's still complex for beginner, especially for a young kid. And the other thing that it doesn't do, it doesn't have lessons, right? You need to go to YouTube or somewhere else and follow along sort of homemade tutorials. So MusicQuest incorporates these uh, interactive guided lessons that will teach you to write music. Gotcha. So how long ago, so you're working on it in college, you're developing this in you know, how many people today are using MusicQuest? And it sounds like it's mostly kids or, or the youth that's using it. Yeah, so we've gone through sort of a series of, we've gone through a maturation over time. That initial app came out, it was totally free. And in the sort of five, six years since then, we've had 300,000 plus people use it in 120 countries to make two and a half million songs. So we've had um, the joy of reaching a lot of people and helping. Uh, we've also sort of built into a paid premium product that has this large library of lessons and uh, works in an educational setting. And we currently have 5,000 subscribers to that paid product. Um, and that's mostly children, some adults with disabilities or special needs, and uh, even people as old as 80 who just want to be able to create music, express themselves through music. So yeah. we sort of think of it a little like Pixar where the movies are most of all for children, but we want them to be delightful for adults as well. That's awesome. And so, so with that subscription, like I saw that some schools are using this, does do schools subscribe and then afford it to their students or how, how's, how does the money flow? Yeah, we want, um, we want to provide a high quality music education to anyone. So the vast majority of our subscribers right now are schools, both schools with music programs and schools without. And I can talk to that for a quick second. Um, in a school with a music program, the biggest challenge that a music teacher will have is you might have 20 children and you can't split them into two small groups very easily because you can't have 10 kids singing one song and 10 kids singing another song at the same time. It's very hard to coordinate. And yet, uh, education is much possible. It's about personalized attention to learn to students so that they can learn effectively. So Music Quest in a school with a music classroom operates sort of as a co-teacher where you can take 10 kids and say, hey, play with Music Quest, take less these lessons, headphones in, right? They're not making sound, they're independently learning. And then a teacher can focus additional effort on and, and attention on, on the other children in the classroom. Uh, without going on, sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, without going on too long, um, a school without music is unfortunate and those children still deserve access to music education. And in all likelihood, that school has digital devices. MusicQuest can be sort of a music infusion. 
And um, we do now support subscriptions as well for families, instrument instructors. Uh, so trying to make it available to all. Gotcha. Um, question from the audience. Eric Smalley asks, what are the costs? Does it come with support for students and teachers? For sure. Thanks, Eric. Uh, the costs depend upon the number of accounts you're buying, as you might imagine. For a single account, uh, which you for yourself or a family, that'd be $100 a year or $9.99 a month. Um, and that tr price drops all the way to $5 per student per year if you're dying at a, buying at extreme bulk. Uh, so we do have a goal to give children in developing countries that, uh, you know, the opportunity to learn in this way at an extremely cheap price, relatively speaking. In terms of support, uh, the program itself is meant to be supported learner in their own home or sort of without a teacher. But of course, it's best with a teacher. We have a whole set of resources that we provide to schools. Uh, and then we're, we've been in sort of paid pilots for years now, learning about how to make this effective. We have a dashboard for teachers and admins, and then we're always on call because we love it. So that's where we're at. Very cool. To, to your point of making this accessible to the world, I, I saw that you're doing something interesting down in Jamaica. Do you want to share what that pilot looks like and, and how that's going? Yeah, thank, I'd love to. Jamaica is a country that clearly has a very rich musical heritage and where music is a big part of the culture. But currently, 85% of their uh, elementary age children are in schools without music programs. And that's just a sort of fundamental cost and resource challenge in terms of buying instruments, paying teachers, having space in buildings. And it's um, not one that's easy to change. So we uh, were invited to pilot in Jamaica and ultimately sort of signed a memorandum of understanding with the government there because in the future you can see a program like Music Quest providing 100% access to all of the children in Jamaica where digital devices are in the schools the five dollar per year for instance price point you know at large bulk makes uh it possible for the for that and affordable and, and feasible um and then a beautiful thing is that if you get 100 percent coverage you can also say oh these 20 percent of kids really love music they're leaning in right versus basketball right or chess or whatever it might be mm -hmm. and you can reallocate the resources that are already in the system to support the sort of continuing learning of those kids versus right now when it's more random, right? You may go to a school with music, you may go to school with a basketball, um, but uh, you, you, you miss kids who might have otherwise yeah. uh, found a passion. So, you know, it, it's nice. It seems like it's become a business, but you started out with an initiative to make music accessible to everybody, regardless of, um, you know, privilege. What is the latest, you know, I've heard all kinds of different things about how music um, relates to, to math performance, um, you know, you had moms playing classical music for their babies. What, what's the latest research showing in terms of music and how it can help a kid in their development? Or, um, you know, what, what's the added value of, of making this music accessible to everybody? Well, there's really consensus that music is beneficial for the brain. Uh, pretty much every study that's been done shows that it's just highly complex we're neurologically hardwired to sort of respond to music and sound. So there's a vast variety of studies um, from math to language learning to um, when it comes to instruments, specifically sort of visual processing and physical dexterity uh, that all show benefits. There also is a sort of conflating factor for many of those studies, which is that <clears throat> most of the people that get to study <clears throat> instruments uh, seriously are already privileged. Uh, sort of as you alluded to, Mason. And um, if they're going to succeed with music, they may already be uh, sort of have natural talents. So one of the things that we hope to do in time is show that everyone is sort of wired for music and everyone can benefit from learning music. And part of our value proposition to customers is the integrations and interdisciplinary content that we have. So, uh, you know, a parent or a specific principal might not feel closely connected to music themselves. But they might say, yes, music is a great vehicle into math, and we have lessons that cover that. Or we have a set of lessons on punctuation where instead of uh, where we use music to sort of emphasize the spacing of commas and 
an exclamation points and a question mark sort of goes up at the end and we demonstrate that musically. So it can be a window into other subjects as well, which is really powerful. Very cool. The, to your point of making it accessible, it just made me think I just was um, in a book club and, and the book was Range by David Epstein. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how really the first rock stars um, were coming out of an orphanage um, and Antonio Vivaldi ended up teaching them, but they just bounced around from instrument to instrument and um, they they had nothing, but, but they ended up being paid to perform at, you know, churches and different gatherings. Um, so I, I think it's really cool. It, it feels like the the modern version of of bringing music, um, you know, to the to the. I don't know. I don't want to say underprivileged, but to the masses. Um, yeah, and if I can just really quickly on that, Mason, there's sort of two fascinating things there. One is, I think there's a Beyonce and a Beethoven somewhere in the world right now that just don't have access. Right? They have melodies right. in their head, but they don't have the pathway to. Um, but to build those pathways is really exciting. Another really quick thing is most kids don't get to pick their instrument. They don't really, uh, they get either their parent has an idea or there's only, you know, this set of instruments left at the school. Um, a platform like Music Quest gives children the opportunity to play with woodwinds and brass and keys and more. And then maybe you get children making more informed choices about what they actually want to um, follow through on. Amazing. Um, another question from the audience, Andrea asks, what does the platform look like? Matter of fact, you know what, we should have done this earlier. Um, let's bring on the video. And so people can show, see, uh, the app in action. Great. Did that play on your end? Uh, not for me, but uh, I hope that it played for the audience. Okay. Hopefully it played for the audience. So um, it, just in the event that it didn't, why don't you um, share with us what the platform looks like and what the interaction is for the kids? I'd love to. And it's it's a little hard to describe verbally. I'll do my best. I'll also encourage people to go to musicquest.com. That's M-U-S-I-Q-U-E-S-T, so no C. But the best way to see it is to actually go and play with it. And you can do that there uh, and see videos of kids and more. With that being said, basically our core system is we turn musical notes into blocks. And we um, do that by representing notes as rectangles that children can then uh, add to their song and configure to create waltzes and rock songs and understand theory and more. So. Uh, that's a powerful experience because most of us have played with blocks as young children, right? You get to do what you want, explore, construct. Um, you can't do that with music in the physical world, but using a digital platform, you can put the power of all of these different instruments in children's hands and let them organize it and experiment. And that's really, um, that's really powerful. Gotcha. So it, it says that the video was not showing. So let's try one more time. We're, we'll bring it up side by side with us. So, so maybe if people are on full screen, they can get a good visual. Please 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 check me about. Oh, oh, minutes, minutes, three, three seconds. seconds. Really easy. <laughs> really easy. It's really easy to learn. Mm -hmm. Like I just like just now, we just made this entire thing in just in less than five minutes. Oh yeah. It's really easy if you, even if you don't play an instrument. Even if you're a bad musician, you could just tap <laughs> anywhere, and it would it would sound good. It's like very professional sounding. Awesome. Like you, it sounds like you could have like an orchestra in your iPad. <laughs> Look what I made. I love it. An orchestra in your iPad. Yeah. Um, that, that, that was really great. So, so tell us, so remote learning is, is 
obviously benefited from from this whole shutdown. Um, you're blending music, remote learning. What what's the effect of the pandemic been for Music Quest? Well, I mean, clearly this pandemic is really tragic and very hard on schools and children and families. Uh, so I don't want to be positive about it in any fashion, um, but I do think the technology we built, we've been building can help people uh, in this time and with remote learning, and, and I'm very uh, proud of that. So we have been seeing increased interest, increased usage. We have pilot partners that were already integrating MusicQuest, for instance, in those schools with music teachers that can continue um, sort of much more effectively uh, with remote learning than they would have been otherwise. And unfortunately, and I know this crosses over into sports as well, what the science seems to indicate is that heavy breathing and sort of expulsion of air is, is a major risk factor. And surprisingly, that has a huge consequence for general elementary music programs in which singing is sort of the primary music making activity. And there's also a lot of touching and, you know, trading instruments and holding hands. So we are not happy um, in any fashion, but we are dedicated to continuing to build the platform out and um, supporting and hopefully schools can return to normal and we can get a vaccine. Um, the last thing I'll add is that we do have a program that we're heading towards, which we have been very eager for for a long time, which we call Musical Pen Pals, which is the idea of children in different places creating music together. And in the video, you sort of saw the kids in person working on the same screen, adding notes and constructing. We can do that on a remote basis where I could add the melody and pass it to Mason. And we could, you know, you could pass it back to me with the right song together. And I think there's a lot of learning and opportunity from that. So we do want to accelerate that um, with the pandemic. Very cool. Um, you know, a, a lot of small businesses have, have benefited from grant funding. Um, we were talking to be, before we got on the show. Um, have you guys, um, you know, given the, the circumstance, um, visited that or been the beneficiary of something like that? We have, and it's been very lucky and also very intentional. You mentioned at the outset that this is a business, but it also has a big mission and a focus on children. And we've oriented towards funding sources that will help us build a really high quality program and pursue the social impact there. Uh, most prominently that's included 1.3 million in grants from the U.S. National Science Foundation, which promotes sort of advanced technologies in our country, and that's been a real honor. Uh, we're also a Colorado-based company and lucky to receive $250,000 from the state of Colorado, uh, which also supports sort of advanced industries companies. Uh, so that's been the, we've had private investors, but we've had even more support from grants. Um, and moving forward, we're interested to see how we can work with philanthropy and other sorts of sources as well to subsidize the program or provide it even for free uh, for families that could benefit. That's awesome. A um, couple audience questions. Yvette Jackson asks, can teachers use this remotely to provide feedback to students? Thanks, Yvette. Uh, teachers can use it to provide assignments to students. Um, and also there's a dashboard I mentioned where you can review what students have done with the program, the lessons they've taken, the songs they've made, and all of our lessons are assessed so you can see their answers to quizzes. Uh, we don't at the moment have a direct feedback mechanism where you can say, hey, Joe, I really love this song, nice use of the violin, uh, but that's on the roadmap. And that's also sort of part of the idea of musical pen pals is to bring in a little more of that chat and sort of back and forth. So thanks, Yvette, um, and we'll try to get to that soon. Great. Um, share with us, what, what was your initial interest in music? Did you play instruments growing up? Um, did you get kicked out of music class so you wanted to, to create something so you could participate? What's what's the, the um, I don't know, spark of inspiration? I can't take too much musical credit for uh, the sort of insight and, and underlying theory behind Music Quest. We've had great musicians on the team since the start. I love music. I grew up in a very musical family. My sister was much more talented, or talent's kind of the wrong word, right? We've learned. My sister uh, took an act to it more and pursued it further. And I think it's kind of interesting because there are many barriers to sort of traditional music and uh, resources is just one of them. I was playing chess and soccer competitively as a kid. 
And you can't really add instrument lessons on top of those two activities very easily. With something like MusicQuest, you can go, you know, on an hour-long drive to the soccer tournament and like play in the back, you know, and learn. So I again I'm not the musician behind all this, but I love children. I love creating opportunity for kids, and, and that's where I hope to work for the rest of my life, actually. Awesome. Very cool. Um share some uh advice to other founders um if you could just you know you've been at this now for for quite a while and i'm sure you've learned some things so um to the other entrepreneurs out there listening what do you got for them well it's actually at that uh right at that concept of working at it for a while which is if you love it it's it really uh makes such a difference and i think there's a lot of different ways to approach entrepreneurship for me though it's been discovering myself and discovering what I want to do for the rest of my life and coming to sort of some acceptance, which is like, I will work on building software for children for decades and be happy. And I hope that yes, it leads to a huge business and I intend for that and I build it to that every day, but also it's a lot easier for me to stick with it because it's so true and deeply related to my passion uh, versus seeing other businesses or other opportunities come up where if I wasn't as connected to it, um, I, I might be more tempted to step away from entrepreneurship or to sort of stop, uh, stop because it is a lot of hard work. So that would be point number one is if you can find something you love, it will give so much back to you even if the business doesn't hit scale you know, immediately or potentially even ever uh, would be my first thought. Gotcha. Well, that's great, man. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Let, let's run the website one more time. So all the, the viewers can can go and check out Music Quest. I'm gonna download it myself, um, make a couple songs. Uh, Jacob, thanks for coming on. Um, it was great having you. And um, you know, hopefully we'll get our season back here because I feel like it's it's our season and not just mine. Thank you. Yes, if you uh, see us in the crowd, you'll see us in the crowd with a Mason Plumley costume. We gotta figure out what that is. <laughs> we wanna be there with you. Good, great, thanks man. Thank you.